vanity. Wow, this color is beautiful. So now that the yarn is dry, it's time to rinse out that pillowcase. And if you remember, I talked about color modification and mordanting with iron over alum. Well, with cotton, you can color modify with that iron water just as easily. So what I'm gonna show you is the difference that a little bit of iron in the colored water can make. We're gonna pull out the pillowcase, we're gonna rinse it out, and then we're going to add just a little bit of iron water to one side of the pillowcase so you can see right before your very eyes how drastic the color change is gonna be. Let me rinse out the pillowcase. I'll let you watch me do that. And then I'll bring you in for a little bit of a closer fun part for the color modification. Holy moly, look at that. Is that not amazing? Whoa, that's so yellow. Okay, so I'm gonna bring you in for the next part. So I'm gonna take my little cup here. I'm just going to add just a little bit of my iron water. First, I'll mix it back in so that it's this nice, weird, dark color. Oh, nice. So for this, I'm going to be using a third of a cup of my iron water. So be careful with this. Don't touch your eyes until you've washed your hands. Don't touch your face. You don't want to be touching your eyes and your face because if you remember, this is essentially rust and vinegar, and that will not feel good in your eyes. Okay, so now I've got that dye bath plastic container. I'm gonna do, hmm, why don't we just do a dip dye? I think that's nice. So we'll pour that water in, and then we're going to add the remaining dye liquid that we were just soaking this in. We're gonna add it to that iron water. I don't wanna pay attention here because this is pretty cool. It happens right away. You know the liquid is orange, but as it mixes with that iron, it's going to darken to something much darker. It may take a sec, just be patient. Now that that's been diluted, I'm gonna take my pillowcase pin up one side on a clothes hanger so that we don't dye all of it a darker color. So I'm just gonna bunch it all together and tie it off in a few spots. See if we can get some fun variation here. Also, just as a tip, if you do make the iron water solution, just be aware, it has a bit of a funky smell. If you're not sure if that's right, it is. Just don't worry about it. The smell will wash out of the thing that you're dyeing. So I'm just gonna lay it in like that. And I'm gonna just take a little bit more iron water. I think I'll do another quarter of a cup. And I'm just gonna pour that right on fabric. Just to make sure we get some good coverage. And that shouldn't take long. And it'll shift the color from a bright yellow to something closer to like an army green. I'm gonna wait on that. Part of me wants to put the yarn in as well, just for a little dip dye. So here's our super bright yellow gold yarn. And I am going to do the same thing. I'm gonna get some elastics on here for some fun tie dye. Oh, you can already see. We're getting some color shift. It'll be more obvious as the time passes. There we go. So that's gonna sit in there for another 15 minutes. It's been 15 minutes or so, probably about 20 minutes now, and you can see the color has clearly shifted. It's much darker now, and if I squeeze out that liquid, a green sort of look to it. It's not as green as I want yet though, so I'm gonna let it sit. I'll come back every 15, 20 minutes. I might even give it up to an hour. It's not going to hurt it if you leave it in there for a little while. So I think that's what I wanna do, just to get as much of that dark shift as I can. I really like when it has, ooh, wow, look it, it's climbing up the pillowcase. It'll probably just darken a little more. There we go, that's better. This is what I was looking for. Now we've got some nice dark, 
dark yarn. That's what I was hoping for. It has been about an hour and a half, so it's taken a little bit of time, but I think it was worth it. I'm gonna rinse these out and then I'll bring you in for a close up. So just hold on. Look at that color! Oh, I'm excited for you to see this. Oh my god. How amazing are these colors? The answer is very amazing. Alright, so now what I'm gonna do is hang up this pillowcase hanger. I'm gonna put it in the same spot that I put the yarn and I'm gonna hang the yarn up there again. The next thing you see is gonna be me talking about how awesome this is because it'll be all dry. At this point, we've got some really beautiful colors. The tie-dye was kind of a weird sort of success because we still have some yellow towards the bottom, but whoa, look at that. So I'm gonna take these outside. It's still warm out. I'll leave them there for a couple of hours and then Next shot will be me showing you what these look like. If you'll recall, we began with some beautiful creamy white merino wool, as well as a cotton bed sheet, 100% cotton. Just a white bed sheet. We used those beautiful orange skins from the onions, and drum roll please. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da, da. Look! <laughs> Look at what we got. Is this not the most beautiful thing? Oh, I seriously love yarn. I love dyeing yarn. I love crocheting with yarn. Yarn is my thing. Look at how pretty the different colors are here. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna remove the white from the shot just so that I can spread this out so you can really get an idea. Oh gosh, that's so pretty. Look at that pillowcase. So we've got that beautiful army green. And of course, where we did the tie dye, we've got lovely little specklings going on throughout. Down at the bottom where we tied it really tight, it turned into this beautiful, just weird tie dye. I love it. I think this is a great idea. This yarn is definitely the star of the show. It's so dark green. In photographs, it can pick up almost black, but it truly is like this beautiful army green. And this gold is stunning. It's like sunshine. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. So if you remember, we did a dip dye and then we added some tie dye in with the elastic. And this is the result. Isn't that interesting? The way it sort of speckled the color all the way through. I think that is just so neat. Oh, I love it. What do you think? So, I really do hope you'll try this out. I hope you'll give it a shot and I hope it'll inspire you to try some other natural dye things. This very beautiful dark brown, I did the same elastic uh, trick. This is from Black Walnuts. I just grabbed them off the ground once they had fallen inside their green husk, smashed them on my driveway, and then put them into a big huge pot to simmer. And the variation you get from black walnuts is actually, it's so stunning. Let me just twist this up so you can see all of the colors twirled together. Look at that. Is that not just amazing? Just from one plant. Even more exciting is this is from that same plant. This is from the first dye bath. This is from the fourth dye bath. So even after dyeing three different rounds of yarn, I still managed to get this beautiful milk chocolate look. I love this color. And then over here, oh, this one's beautiful too. This one is like a sort of muted yellow gray that fades into a beautiful blue gray. I honestly, I don't even know how these colors came out of the plant that they came from. You won't really believe it, but Japanese maple makes this beautiful color. One more that I have as a stain is this one. And this is actually made from the skins of blue Concord grapes. So in the fall last year, I picked a whole bunch of blue, oh, this was two years ago now. 
In the fall, two years ago, I picked a whole bunch of grapes at my parents' farm. I skinned all of them. I made juice out of the insides, and with the skins, I made this beautiful skein of yarn. Well, this is the only one that's left. I made quite a few. Um, it has faded to this beautiful sort of sky blue, a little bit steel gray. I just love it, and I love how there's these gray portions in there that it's kind of like clouds in the sky. I think it's so pretty. So this is technically not a color fast dye. This one, however, has been living in a <laughs> well-lit living room for almost two years and has had very little fade go on. Oh, is it not the prettiest? So this little sweater vest I made uh, <laughs> as my first attempt at making a sweater vest, I used this beautiful green and pink and gray and blue yarn. It was actually made from onion skins, Concord grapes, and avocado. I tied off the different skein and dip dyed it in all different ways and it came out beautifully. It has faded when the wash, it's been washed several times now, but it's faded beautifully to this beautiful sort of teal blue and the green has only gotten brighter. I think that that's, it just goes even better with that vest. This top I crocheted again entirely with naturally dyed wool. Let's go from the bottom to the top, shall we? At the bottom here, we've got blue Concord grapes. This one was pre and post mordanted with iron. Next right here, isn't that lovely? This one is actually from a local grass. It's an invasive species, but I pulled an awful lot of it. And so I figured I'd give it a shot and it came out beautifully. Oh, this color, I'm very much planning to redo because it's so pretty. This one is actually a purpley brown. I don't know if the camera can pick up quite how purple it really is, but it's very much purpley brown. This one is from the branches, the new branches of plum trees. My parents had a whole bunch of wild plum trees on their farm and I thought, let's give it a go. And it made this beautiful purpley brown. Up above, we've got another onion skin. This one was completely pre mordanted in iron and then dyed. So you can see it's almost completely green as opposed to this yellow and green mixed one here. So this is just a very basic crocheted shirt, but I think it adds a lot of character and a lot of personality to this by having it be entirely handmade. The next step is learning how to spin yarn so I can spin it, dye it, crochet it, and then wear it. <laughs> I have this beautiful sweater. It's the easiest sweater pattern. Speaking of which, everything I've shown you actually does have a tutorial associated with it. If you check my YouTube channel, you can find some fun projects that you might be able to use your natural dye yarn with. So this one is a men's extra large. Here you can see we've got this beautiful, bright, almost a neon yellow. This is from Queen Anne's Lace. If you can't find Queen Anne's lace in your area, use carrot tops. They're from the same family. The tops of carrots are gonna give you this beautiful color as well. Up here, where you can barely even see the color, it just looks almost black. This is from Black Eyed Susans. So when you simmer Black Eyed Susans, they make a pretty green. If you pre mordant your yarn in iron, you get nearly black. That's the closest I've ever come to a black. And I think that's just beautiful. Below it, you can see we've got more of those Concord skins. The peachy pink here is actually from avocado, so it looks like a nice summer sky. Below that down here, this beautiful sage green is brought to you by English Ivy. I just clipped some from my yard, simmered a few hours, and got that lovely color. Next, we've got a little strip of black walnut, followed by avocado. Isn't that amazing? So the dark purpley spots are where the avocado had contact with iron, and the pink is just from where it had contact with alum. It's one of my favorite dyes. And then down even more, we've got Japanese maple, which I think is awesome. If you look at the bottom half of this sweater, it goes black walnut, black walnut, black walnut, black walnut, black walnut, black walnut. All of, from here down is all from black walnuts. It's either pre-mordanted differently, color modified, or it's an exhaust dye bath. Pretty much magic. I very much love 
how unique natural dye is and how many variations you can get just from what you find in your yard. So I just wanted you to see some of the options, some of the things you might be able to make. This is something else that you can make. If you did fabric and you dyed your cotton fabric, this was dyed entirely with black walnut husks. Obviously the pattern section is just patterned fabric, but the entirety of this middle section on the front and on the back was dyed with black walnut skins and husks. I thought a nice way to wrap this up would be showing off some of the items that I have naturally dyed. So first, I've got this beautiful scarf. It was going to be a dress, a long dress, and then I changed my mind about halfway through and then I made it a nice long scarf. This is done in crochet. It is yellow, blue, and green. If you see across the colors, we've got at this end some beautiful blues, and then in the middle some awesome yellows, and then it speckles out to like a cream. I've had this scarf for a couple of years now, and I actually used onion skins and blue concord grapes. That's it for all of the colors in here. Onion skins and blue concord grapes. I'm totally smitten with onions. I think that they are probably one of the best things. And I want to show you that big crocheted sweater because I know some of you are going to want to see it in full. Here is the full crocheted sweater. Beautiful, isn't it? And this is a perfect project for scraps because you only need just a little bit of wool in each color. Next, I have this beautiful gold top. This is cotton as well. Um, I found this at a thrift store and thought it was beautiful. It was white and I used goldenrod to dye it at the end of last summer. It's speckled gold throughout because I didn't mordant it properly. I didn't pre-mordant it. Um, so not all of the areas stuck to the dye, stuck to the fabric, I mean. Is that not interesting though? It gives a unique result every time that I try with fabric, but when I do it with wool, I know what I'm getting and I know what I'm doing. And let me just show you again, we've got that larger t-shirt style. I wear this one a lot in the summer, in the summer evenings. It's like a perfect, perfect weight because it is wool but it's lacy, so it doesn't give any issue there. And I'm gonna just show you the vest so you can see it proportionally. I think it's quite cute. I was feeling the yellow, can you tell? This uh, onion skin endeavor has been inspiring me in so many ways. I am ready, ready to make something with this beautiful yarn.